Right then. For the last couple of weeks, all the conversation's been around who could replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if or when he's going to be sacked. Uh, we can see that that's not going to happen before the Watford game. So what I want to do in this video, and it's important we do have this discussion, so please stick around for it. We need to talk about what could change and what needs to change from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer against Watford, against Villarreal, against Chelsea, against Arsenal, immediately, straight away, unequivocally, if we have an iota of a chance for a turnaround to happen under Solskjaer. I really don't think it can be. I think we're past that point, but I want to have a discussion about how things can improve right now at Manchester United because things have to from what we saw, the shower of shit before the international break against City, Liverpool, and everyone else. Please drop a like on the video if you do like it by the end of it and consider subscribing to United People's TV. But let's take a look at the five most important things that Solskjaer needs to change right now at Manchester United if we're going to see an upward curve. And number one on my list, it's abundantly obvious, I suppose. But Solskjaer has to actually create a plan now. I mean, he should already have this plan, but he needs to create a plan and stick with it. The reason I'm saying that is because if I look at uh, how Manchester United set up away at Atalanta, we switched to a 3-5-2. So many saw it as a sort of emergency formation from Solskjaer to bring some solidity to defence, and it worked with a 3-0 against Spurs. But then as soon as Varane went off against Atalanta, we switched back to a 4-2-3-1. We dumped the formation completely. We switched it completely. And it's odd. Solskjaer needs to stick with something right now have the cojones to stick with it and make it work. And I'm not just talking about the 4-2-3-1 with no real overall shape. I, I, but the problem is, is I don't know what that plan is. The problem is, is that I know we need one. The bigger problem is I don't know what one it should be. But something has to be stuck with. We, should, we shouldn't be having these conversations three, three years into Solskjaer, sorry. Um, but we are. And if anything's going to change positively now, it has to be something that's firm, certain, and that the players know what they're talking about. And that's what I mean about that plan and sticking to it. If Solskjaer keeps chopping and changing, then it, the players get confused. And then we saw what the similar to what we saw against Liverpool with uh, the semi-press. Some pressing, some not pressing. As Ralph Ragnick said, you can't just be a little bit of pregnant. It's either you are pregnant or you're not. The same with pressing, and that's not what United did against Liverpool. But that's what I mean with the plan. Not specifically a formation. I mean, overall, the players have to be confident in what they're being told. And if Ole's not completely confident in his own mind, how are the players supposed to be confident? So that's point one. Number two, it's all about player loyalties. And Solskjaer has to shift away from this mentality. Because these player loyalties have created a sort of uh, a certain loyalty inside the squad to Solskjaer from certain players. We're talking Harry Maguire. We're talking Luke Shaw. We're talking Marcus Rashford. We're talking those sorts of players who really have had plenty of game time. Scott McTominay and Fred, clearly. But player loyalties will only get you so far. And what we're seeing now is reports, constant reports of a divided dressing room of the fringe players at Manchester United being angry with Solskjaer. And that comes down to these player loyalties. I said it would be Freddie McTominay with the hill that Solskjaer died on. I think that's probably happened. But Maguire has jumped up and made Maguire Mountain too. Maguire has been in decent form for England during the international break, so he will be played on form. But I just want players to be played on form. Form is the leveller, right? doesn't matter how good you are, how new you are to the football team, how experienced you are. If your form is bad and someone else's form is better, that player plays in front of you. Yeah, that's what I mean by calling it the leveller. It makes it easy. It means it, Solskjaer doesn't really have to explain his decisions to players. He's like, he's in better form than him. We'll rotate in and out. If we had that policy continuously... It would mean the same sort of thing as when Liverpool switched their 11 out and they still look like Liverpool. It's very different at United. And I think Solskjaer has absolutely got to move away from this player loyalty, man. Fred and McTominay just playing for the sake. No, you've got players on the bench. And Van der Beek might not be the Messiah, but he will certainly be a, a, something that deserves to be tried. As I said, it, it, Solskjaer has undermined his own uh, foundation of that sort of squad unity he built through player loyalty, through like arms around the shoulder treatment in how he's treating certain players now. And it's it's sort of coming full circle. So we've got to get rid of that player loyalty against Watford, against Villarreal straight away. Moving on to point three on my list, and I think this is quite important. Solskjaer needs to see the performance of the team from now on just as important as the result. And I'm explaining exactly why. Ultimately, football is a results-driven business. 
when you win games, everything is going smooth. When you're drawing or losing games, everything is going bad. And that's where the pressure comes in. But when it comes to the situation that Solskjaer is in right now, after Liverpool and City, the performances are just as important as the results. The results will obviously ease the pressure on Solskjaer internally and externally. The performances are what can change the narrative. Now, with the fans, results now won't just be enough. It won't just be enough to play against, I don't know, uh, Watford at the weekend, to be in it for the 89 minutes of Watford to hit the post twice, to Haya to make four great saves, and then Ronaldo to pop up with an 89th minute winner. That won't be enough to change the narrative. You need, you to, need see to see United, United controlling, controlling games, games. Ollie. Ollie. That has to happen. The performances now have to be seen as just as important as the results. If this narrative is to be in any way, shape or form changed. As I said, I'm trying to look at, at, at things here that could happen and take us in a better direction. Because if Solskjaer is in charge, then Solskjaer is in charge. And I need to see these things happen. The performances for me, as I said, just as important as results from now on. Number four on the list is a bit of an extension of the player loyalties comment I made. But it's about rotation, man. Oli has got to rotate and rotate properly, man. Van der Beek, Sancho. Why is why are we even talking about Sancho in this rotational thing? People have sort of had a go at me saying, Sam, you're jumping on it too early. It's early in the season. Yes, it is early in the season with Sancho. But I'm seeing extremely bad patterns emerging with how Solskjaer has been managing so Sancho. And so I've been frustrated with it. And so how do you think Sancho feels? You've got players like... We went into this season with a big squad to avoid uh, burning players out like we did with Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford last year. We're heading towards it again right now. I know it's November, so the burnout won't happen, but the, the lack of rotation is, is hurting. And United are playing so many games right now. We've got Watford on Saturday, Villarreal a few days later, then Chelsea, then we've got Arsenal as well. We've got 11 games between now and the end of December. Rotation has to happen because if you're going to keep the squad happy, you're going to be rotating. You're going to be playing. And it's not just about giving crap games to certain players. They want Premier League games, Premier League minutes. They're all Premier League footballers. And to keep the squad if, there, if there's any chance of getting some unity back in the squad, it's about rotation. It's about not ignoring the fringes. It's about using the whole squad as one. Something I don't think Solskjaer's done very well this season. And I'll be honest, the fifth point on this list is... I want you to pray with me. We just got to pray for a miracle. After what happened against Liverpool, after what happened against City, against Villa, Everton... Leicester, Young Boys, West Ham. There's been so many... It's been a rough few months for Manchester United fans, hasn't it? And I'll be honest, I, I went past the point of no return with Solskjaer after Liverpool and after City. But the club has still decided to back him. Whether they've backed him or they've simply not sacked him. I, I do think they're two very, very different things. Uh, but Solskjaer's going to be in charge against Watford. And I'm praying for a miracle, man. I'm praying somehow that things can flip and turn, and we can go upwards again. I don't want to see United lose. I want to see United win. We've got a great squad there. We've had good results this season. Overall, the consistency has just been out the window, though. It's been put, and watching United has been terrible. But for me, these are some sort of important changes that have to come in straight away, man. We, they shouldn't be needed. If we were managed better, they wouldn't be here. These problems wouldn't exist, but they are, and they do. So that's why I'm putting these down as key things that Solskjaer has to change straight away. Now, you let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Is there really absolutely no point or any chance of any of this happening? You let me know what you think and make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But Watford's going to be a hell of an interesting game on Saturday. That's for sure.